Today we are going to discuss um, what is the impedance for, um, uh, for a given network and how we can actually calculate the impedance if a circuit is given to you or a network is given to you. So before we start impedance, we just recall from Ohm's law that resistance is nothing but voltage divided by the current. Now with, with phasors, which we studied last time, impedance is actually a complex number quantity, which is represented as here. So this impedance is a complex number quantity. Given that voltage with phasor can be represented as this. And if you want to review how this is represented as in phasors, we, you can review the previous lecture slides on phasors. And this is represented by the amplitude of the magnitude of the current IM and the theta I, which is the phasor for the current. So impedance can be divided or written as Vm over Im, the theta V minus theta I. So this can be written as Z. So this is Vm over Im is represented by Z, which is impedance. And the angle can be represented by theta Z, right? which is actually equal to, in rectangular form, it is equal to R plus Jx. So what is R? R is the real part, resistance. What is X? X is the imaginary part, which is the reactance. Right, so we, we, we learn a new term, which is reactance, which is the imaginary part for the impedance. And the real part for the complex quantity impedance is the resistance value, right? So Z is nothing but Vm over Im. And this theta Z is nothing but subtraction of voltage and current phases. So in order to summarize this one, or in order to find out what is the magnitude for this Z impedance it is nothing but R squared plus X squared, right? And what is the phase and how it is calculated? It's nothing but X over R, right? And on rectangular plane, we can represent this. Let's say this is the phasor representation. This particular point will show us the magnitude Z in the form of R plus Jx, where R is the real, is actually this particular point. And the imaginary part is on the y-axis, which is this particular point. And the angle is actually this. So R is also can be written as cos of Z magnitude, cos of theta Z. Or this can also be written as Z sine of theta Z, the imaginary part, right? So in order to summarize this one, what are the impedances for all these three components, resistors, capacitor and inductor. And if you want to really review how we derive these values, you can, you can actually review my previous lecture slides. Impedance for a resistor is nothing but its resistance, right? However, the impedance for the capacitor is a complex quantity represented by one by J omega C. And for inductor, it is J omega L. 
right? If the impedances are in series, the, the equivalent resistance is going to be just adding up all the impedances of the network. And if we want to find out the impedance in parallel, the equivalent Z or actually one over equivalent Z will be equal to one over Z1 plus one over Z2 plus one over Z1. So I'll make this thing clear. As one over Z equivalent, right? So you have to remember these three in order to solve any given circuit. In complex, in complex domain, right? So you, if you want to find an impedance of a network, and a circuit is given to you, and you're 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 asked to calculate the equivalent impedance of a network, you need to remember how you can convert the resistance, inductor, or capacitance values to a complex number quantity, which is the impedance values of them, right? And then you can find the series and parallel combination, just like the way you did it for resistive circuits. And you can solve this one. All right. So now this this circuit or so this network is given to you, right? And it comprises of not only just the resistors, but it has an inductor, it has a capacitor as well. And what you have asked is to find out the impedance, the equivalent impedance of the whole network, Z, at two frequencies, 60 hertz and 400 hertz, right? So the 60 hertz and 400 hertz will be used to find out the omega, which is two pi f, which is a frequency dependent or angular frequency. So omega will be different for these three, two different values. And units of omega, if you remember, is radians per second. So let's say if I draw this one as different impedances, as Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, as it is given in the network, this is going to be my Z equivalent at this particular point. So I need to first of all calculate the impedances, Z1. Z1 is an inductor, which is 10. So Z1 is going to be J omega L, right? Z2 is nothing but a resistor. So I can just use the Z2 as a resistor or R2 or R1. Z3 is nothing but a capacitor. So we will calculate this using one over J omega C. We already know omega, we already know capacitor, we already know J. So J, you have to remember that what is one over J? Please note, this is important. One over J is nothing but, you can also write this as J over J squared, which is equal to minus J. So one over J is nothing but minus J. So you can replace this one by minus J or omega C, right? So Z4 is again a resistor, so this is one. And what is the Z equivalent for this circuit? You can calculate by, so Z2, which is two ohm, is in, is in series with the capacitor. So we'll just add them up, Z2 plus Z3. And these two are in parallel with one ohm resistor, which is Z4. And all of them are in series with Z1. So this is how you have to actually calculate these quantities, right? Or you can also write this Z equivalent as, so what is Z1? J omega L plus Z2 and Z3. So we can just add up two plus one over J omega C this thing in, oops, sorry, 
in parallel with Z4 and Z4 is 1. Uh -huh. Right? So I give you an answer for this one and for you to calculate this one. The Z equivalent in 60 hertz is 1 plus 3.77 J. And what are the units? It's ohms. It's, it's actually the impedance. Right? And Z equivalent, so you have to calculate two frequencies. So for the second frequency, what you have to do is your omega is going to be changed. Right? So this is going to be. 1 plus 1 plus 25.1 J. Right, so this is the resistance. This is the reactance. So 1 is the resistance and 25.1 is the reactance, right? The complex part for this network. All right, so we are going to um, solve this last circuit and before we move on to other topics. Um, so this is a network which has three elements, resistor, inductor, and capacitor. They all are in series. So Z equivalent is going to be just adding up all these three. What is the frequency to find out the omega? It is 60 hertz. However, just remember, I think this is a typo. So voltage is represented in time domain, right? So voltage is represented in time domain. So it is always, it is better if we convert this voltage to make things simpler in phasor domain. So in phasor domain, this voltage can be represented by 50, which is its magnitude, angle 30 degrees. Right, and this is you can calculate omega using this one, two pi into sixty. Right, so let's say if impedance for the resistor is twenty five ohms, the impedance for the inductor is j omega l, which is j time two pi sixty times L, which is 20 millihenry, which is equal to J7.54 ohm. The impedance for a capacitor is one over J omega C, which is calculated as 53.5 ohms. So Z equivalent, can be written as just adding up these three quantities, Z1, Z2, Z3, which is 25, plus J7.54 minus J53.05, which is equal to 25 minus J45.51 ohms, right? So what is asked? We are asked to find out the current. All right, so what is the current, right? What is the current? The current can be written as voltage divided by the impedance. What is the voltage? We know the voltage 50 angle 30 degree. What is the Im impedance? Impedance is 25 minus J45.51. Now these two quantities are represented at two different domains, right? We need to convert them into the same domains, right? The first, or the top one is the phasor representation and the, the, and the, and the denom denominator is actually the rectangular representation. So what I would do is that I will convert this rectangular representation, 25 minus G, 45.51, this one, to the phasor representation. On the right hand side, if you look here, oops, sorry, R is equal to the, I'm calculating the magnitude. So this is going to be 25 squared plus 45 plus square, which is equal to 51.93. And the angle is going to be 10 worse, Y over X. Y is 45.51, X is 
25, so it's going to be minus 61.2. So I can write this as 40, 50 angle 30, 51.93 angle minus 61.22, which I can write as 0.96 angle of 30 plus, since when it goes above, it is going to be subtracted. So this is going to be 30 plus 61.22, which is equal to 0.96 angle 91.22. All right, so this is this is actually the cut. Now they have another ask is what is the value of frequency? Uh, what is the value of what is the impedance if the frequency is four hundred hertz? So if what is going to be changed if frequency is four hundred hertz, the, the the resistance is going to be the same. The impedance for the resistor is going to be the same. However, the impedance for the inductor and capacitor will change because they are dependent upon the omega, which is the frequency part. So the ZR is, 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 will remain the same. However, ZL will be J50 after calculating the omega. So omega is equal to 2 pi of 400 now and the impedance of capacitor is going to be after calculating 7.96 please do verify too so simply z the, the equivalent impedance is going to be just adding up all these three quantities which is nothing but 25 j 42.31 and exactly the same way i did it for 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 this one I can convert this into the phasor representation by calculating its magnitude and its phase, right? So, so this is very interesting because if you see, um, let me change the color so it's clear to you. If you see this equivalent impedance at one particular frequency versus this equivalent impedance at another different frequency what you see is that the real component remain the same because it is 25 and why the real component is same because it is not resistance is not dependent upon the frequency element only the imaginary part is changing when we are changing the frequency right so just keep this in mind and try to practice more uh, more of these network circuits from your book thank you very much